Hello and thank you for joining me for today's webinar, previewing the upcoming release of ARCHICAD 23. We'll be looking at some of the key new features in this release, including the new tools and some of the productivity improvements. Bear in mind that ARCHICAD 23 is still progressing through the beta testing stages, so there may be some minor differences between what you see today and the final version. We'll start off by looking at some of the productivity improvements that we've got in ARCHICAD 23 including the new Action Centre. If we've just accessed that through one of the tabs at the top, that it's also accessible through the file menu. And this displays various information on the status of the project. In previous versions, we were prompted with a lot of pop-ups during opening a project. Things like potentially missing libraries, plot links and drawings that may need updating, or updates for ARCHICAD itself. In ARCHICAD 23, these messages have all been combined into the Action Center, so we're not interrupted with these messages before, but we can quickly check the status of the project and our copy of ARCHICAD by going into the Action Center at any time. The tabs themselves have also been updated, and now include this tab preview. So as we hover over these tabs, it displays the content of that particular tab, whether it's a section, 3D window, or another viewpoint type. But this is, this is particularly helpful where we have multiple viewpoints of the same type open. For example, most, multiple sections which may be using different view settings. And when we have a lot of tabs open, the names may become truncated, so we can quickly identify which tab we need to open and click on it to actually open that part of the model. We've also got the tab overview at the top left corner. And by clicking on that, it will display all of the tabs open on one screen at the same time. Again, just by clicking on one of those, it will open up the content of that tab. In terms of the new tools, some of the biggest changes in ARCHICAD 23 relate to the new column and beam tools. First of all, we have a new placement or geometry method, which is the two-click method. And that's really useful where we've got things that aren't necessarily horizontal or vertical within the model, but we can define things that are inclined, in this case by placing a column between two stories, but clicking the first placement point on the current story, and then defining the placement point on the story above. Same for beams. If I go to place a beam, in previous versions we were generally limited to the floor plan plane, but now if I change it to a vertical plane, we can define that beam within two clicks in an elevational type placement method. However, some of the biggest changes relating to the beam and column tools are the options that relate to the segments within those. In previous versions, we were limited to one uniform overall section, whether that was circular, rectangular, or a complex profile. But as of ARCHICAD 23, we can segment the geometry of the columns and beams and apply different settings to those different segments. So we can see here, if I change the size of this top segment, that affects just that portion of the column. And as well as having a uniform cross-section, we can have a tapered cross-section, which will provide a transition between those different those different sections, those different segments. Now as we open up the settings for that column, we'll see that we have different controls over each of those sections, those segments. And we also have controls over the joins. So in this case, we can set them perpendicular to the direction of the column. Now as I click on that column and stretch it off to the side, we can see that it still maintains those different those different segments. We can also click at any of the connections between those or the top and the base of the column and we can control the angles for these different joins and ends. This column is currently set to a flexible size and that means that as we stretch it, it stretches the entire column in proportion. But it could be the case that we want some parts of the geometry to be a fixed size 
And if we change those segments as required, we'll see now that as we stretch that column, those parts stay uniform and we've just stretched one portion, the remaining portion of that column. Same if we were to place a beam. We can place a beam within the model. And we can segment that. If in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a complex profile. And even though we're using a complex profile for this beam, we can still change the individual segment sizes. In this case, I can increase the end portion. And like before, we can have tapered cross sections. to transition between those different section sizes. One of the other th interesting things when using the complex profiles in this way is that we still have access to the modifiers which were introduced in a previous version recently. So as we stretch those modifiers, we can actually transition things like even the thickness of that profile. And that means when we're creating things like space frames, we no longer need to rely on objects as we can create the geometry that we need within the individual beams and column tools and piece those together. Another change that we've got, the fact that we can now curve that not just on the floor plan plane, which we had in previous versions, but we can also curve that in the vertical plane. That doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have a uniform start and end point. We can also elevate one of those points and change the end cutting plane angles. Here we've got an example file where we've got some of these new beams and columns that have been drawn in place, creating this warehouse. And what we can do here is look at how we would put together one of those beam and columns as an example. Here we can see the standard vertical column and the complex profile beam, which is what we would have expected to be modelled in previous versions. But as of 23, we can start adding extra information to these at the modelling stage by adding segments. and then individually controlling the profiles of these segments. We can add a taper. And then edit the beam as well to create that intersection. And just by editing these profiles, we can create quite a detailed connection in those geometries. Once we've created one, we can replicate that just by using our normal editing methods. We've also got here a footing for one of those columns. And again, this has just been created using um, the standard column tool in Archicam 23. And in this case, we've got two segments which work together to create this overall geometry. Some other changes for the beam and column tools relate to the floor plan displays of these. We need to be able to create our drawings in the way that we want to output them. In ICAD 23, the beams now have options for the cover fills. We also have various representation options based on the stories. Uh, and improvements where we have hidden elements. Here we can see dashed outlines 
for some of those footings and things where they're behind the current floor slab. If I quickly just cut a hole into this floor slab, we can see that where they're no longer hidden, they display the top view. We'll also have a look at an example of creating a curved structural beam. So here we have a sports hall or swimming, swimming hall project. And I'm going to zoom in here and place a complex profile beam from the start to the end point. And then just by simply using our normal editing commands, we can curve that beam in elevation. to create this kind of end result. As another example here, we've got this cathedral model, which is using the new beam and column tools in quite an interesting way. So here we've got another segmental column, and this one's got a number of different segments with different profiles assigned to them. Some of these are just rectangular and some of them are tapered. Or if we have a look at the interior of this church, we've got a lot of the model that has been modelled in this way. So looking at these columns here, for example, these are just individual columns with a few segments. As we look through the list, we can see the different column structures that have been used here. as well as the archways and vaulting which have been created using complex profile beams which have then been curved, ending up with a very nice overall effect. The other new tool that we've got in Archicad 23 is the new opening tool. So this really is used to create structural openings in various elements within Archicad as long as the appropriate drawings and documentation information. These create an association with the elements that they're placed into. So for example, we can see if I make a change to this wall, the opening still being maintained. And there's controls over how you want to create those associations. At the moment it's perpendicular. It could be that we need a horizontal or vertical opening to those two. As well as in 3D, those openings are displayed in the floor plan drawings, the 2D drawings, with various controls over how you want to display those openings, depending on the type of opening and the required 2D drawing type. These aren't necessarily tied to just one single element. We can also tag those to other elements within the project and it will cut through multiple structural elements. Or it could be that we want to actually sketch out where we want to create the opening. So here, if I just quickly create a morph, we could control the limit for how far we want that to extend. And we can turn this into an opening. In this way we can very quickly create an opening that spans multiple stories in one go. Also in Archicad 23 we have a new catalogue of surfaces of textures that have been included and these are generally higher resolution and a bit more modern looking to give um, a bit of an improved visual appearance in the 3D window and renderings. So here we can see for example the elements within Archicad 22 and here we've got the same element types with the same materials in Archicad 23 so we can see the vastly improved appearance before we've even changed any of the parameters that relate to these and just to finish off you might also have seen some recent news on twin motion so all qualifying Archicad 23 teamwork licenses will be entitled to a matching number of fully functional licenses 
of Epic Games' upcoming enhanced version of Twin Motion, and that will be free of charge. There is co close collaboration between the two companies, and that will ensure seamless workflow between Arcad and Epic Software. The offer starts at the time of the first release of Epic's upgraded software and runs until the end of Arcad 23's release cycle. So we'll hopefully receive a little bit more information on that soon. Thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar, introducing you to some of what to expect from the release of Archicad 23. We've also planned some full training courses to cover this in more detail, as well as some of the, the minor improvements that we haven't covered in today's webinar in a more of a hands-on training environment. More information will be provided to all, into, all attendees for the webinar and that will also be um, displayed on our on our website. Please do let us know if you have any questions on Archicad 23 or licensing or training options, and you will receive an email shortly, so come back to us if you do have any questions on that. Thanks again.